A steak a day keeps the Botox away. Hello, everyone. This is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a controversial one. It's going to be super juicy. I love talking about body image, social media, and just all of the beauty nonsense out there that a lot of us girls fall prey to. I think body image is something that a lot of girls struggle with, and I totally get it. There's a lot out there on what's trendy, what's the ideal body type. And I'm just going to tell you to kick this off to abandon all body image trends. That's right. Forget all of it. Forget the super skinny. Forget the medium size, the endomorphs, the ectomorphs, the esomorphs. Is that what it's called? I don't know. There's so many. Forget it all. Forget obese. Forget thigh gap. Like literally everything that you've been told over the years and throughout the different decades, forget everything you told that was trendy at the time. So first and foremost, let's go back to my childhood. We're going to have a blast from the past when I was growing up in the 90s and what was considered the ideal body image. So in the 90s, we had Britney Spears and Christine Aguilera and Jessica Simpson and all these pop princesses on the scene. And a lot of them were super, super thin. And they were always on the magazine covers. They were always on Cosmopolitan, Vogue, every fashion magazine you can think of. And back then, those magazines were literally our social media. Like that was where we were blasted with all this messaging on body image. So it was really all we were exposed to. We also had the old school Victoria's Secret brand and the fashion show, and that was just a big spectacle growing up. And I remember just seeing the angels on the TV and I was like, oh my gosh, like how did these women like get so thin? Like this doesn't make any sense. Like they must have super fast metabolisms or very stringent diets. So that was what I was exposed to sort of growing up in the 90s. And back then in that decade was when skinny was super popular. But then fast forward to the 2000s and Kim Kardashian comes on the scene and really lets the world know, hey, curvy is best. You can put some weight and some muscle on you which I thought was a really great thing. And I think more girls were starting to realize that being super skinny and having such a low body fat percentage was not necessarily the epitome of health. Back in the 90s, it was painted as this epitome of health because also a lot of the fitness magazines and the health magazines were promoting this type of look. It was interesting because in the mid 2000s, Victoria's Secret model Adriana Lima finally came clean about the diet she was eating leading up to the Victoria's Secret fashion show. I remember like actually getting sick to my stomach, like reading what she actually did to get ready. Seven days before the show, she would go on a juice cleanse and have no solid foods. (laughs) Like, what the heck? Like, were you going to the bathroom? Like what's going on with that? And I just remember thinking, wow, this is so extreme. And like, there must be a better way to just feel good in your body and feel healthy and just feel great how you come off aesthetically without going to these crazy extremes. And it took me many years to to learn this. But when Kim Kardashian came on the scene, I hate to say it. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of her, but it was helpful. And then we also had Kate Upton, who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And she's obviously a very like curvy and strong woman. And what was so cool about her was she was posting 
on her Instagram during that time, what her workouts looked like. She wasn't lifting like itty bitty five pound weights. Kate Upton swimsuit model was doing like 300 pound hip thrusts and like 200 plus pound deadlifts and doing bear crawling and pull-ups and push-ups and like all of these strong athletic movements. And I was like, wow, that is so cool that a model actually trains like an athlete. So I thought that was really nice. Eventually in the 2020s, we took a hard left turn and obesity was being applauded. I think when we talk about that to female athletes, especially to be okay with all body types, I think that's a lie because body composition does matter for sport performance and having muscle matters. It's just basic physics. And I'll link a bunch of articles below in the caption, but you need to have a strong and robust body composition. So I think super skinny is bad for female athletes. And I think obese is bad for female athletes. So girls really have to look at body composition, their fat mass, their muscle mass, and also their bone health. Very, very important for our female athletes. Now, amidst all this noise, it's like really hard to discern, okay, well, what is the ideal body composition? Because it's changed literally every decade and now even like every month. It's so exhausting to keep up with. So my advice is you need to focus on achieving a body composition where you, one, can perform at a high level in your sport, meaning you are fast, explosive, strong. You can shield defenders. You can beat your opponents. You don't wither away in the final minutes of competition. Your condition. I think it's really important to get really honest with yourself. Is my body composition athletic enough to endure all this? You also, too, want to get a body composition where you feel amazing most of the time. Now, everyone has good and bad days. No one's going to feel amazing all the time and be perfect, but you can absolutely nourish and train and rest your body in a way where you feel energized most of the time, you feel focused, you feel sharp, not just in sports, but in academics and school. You feel creative, like you just want to wake up and attack the day. And you also feel calm and your mood is very stable most of the time. So really think about, okay, what am I putting into my body that is making me feel good the majority of the time? Because I know a lot of you aren't always feeling good all the time. And that's a red flag. That is a huge red flag. If you are falling asleep in school, if you're not able to focus on your homework, if you're not lasting the full competition or your muscles are always in chronic muscle soreness, something needs to change with your body composition. I'm just telling it how it is. Body composition absolutely matters for sport performance. So focus on feeling, focus on sport performance. The key with body composition is we don't need to subtract things. I don't want girls to think, oh, I need to like restrict to get like a body that can play sports and last. No, building a better body composition is all about adding things, adding muscle, adding weight to the bar and progressing your strength, adding protein to your meals so that your muscles are repairing and rebuilding after a workout. And they're not staying in chronic soreness all the time. Adding healthy fats so that your brain is sharp and you're giving your brain the, the fatty acids and DHA and EPA that it needs and the saturated fat as well so that you can be on in school. So you can be energized for that practice after school or that club practice at 7.30 p.m. at night till 9 p.m. at night. And then you're getting home and doing more homework you want your brain to be on. So it's really about adding things to, to get a better body composition and to feel better and to really nourish your brain. It can also be about adding more speed workouts and making sure that your body stays explosive and robust and 
speed workouts are such a great muscle building exercise. I mean, sprinting is one of the most intense things the body can do. So adding that speed is also going to help your body composition and performance and feeling. I'll be honest, I've never struggled with body image issues because Growing up, I just wanted to perform at a high level. And when I chased high performance, when I progressed in the gym, when I got faster on the field, when I conditioned myself more, I naturally developed the body composition where I could be the best soccer player I could be. And especially in college, I started to take care of my nutrition a little bit more, eat a little bit healthier. And my junior and senior year at Johns Hopkins University, I feel like I finally peaked as a soccer player. And it was like the perfect time to peak because it was pretty much the end of my career. And I was just really happy with my body and where I was because I could play a full 90 minute match or go into double overtime, no problem. And at the same time, handle the rigor (laughs) that was the academic life of Johns Hopkins University. Not sure how I passed, but again, we made it out. We're here. We survived. (laughs) I will say one thing that I did struggle with growing up was acne. I know a lot of you guys struggle with that. It can be really confusing, like why you get it. You can think, oh, is this genetic? Is this just something I just have to suck it up and deal with and just wait till I get through puberty and college? It doesn't have to be something you deal with. And this took me until age 30 to realize. That's why I wanted to talk about it today because I know that having acne and like red skin can really destroy your confidence. And I think it's really important that we nourish ourselves from the inside out, not just for sport performance, but I think acne is definitely like a big insecurity in a lot of you guys. When I was in high school, I like always had it. I went to so many dermatologists. I tried all the topical medications and like they helped a little bit, but my redness was still always there. The medications like really dried out my skin. And I also never wanted to go on something like Accutane just because of the risks of the side effects, especially like in the mental health area. I just didn't want to try it because of that. So yeah, I just kind of went through high school and college, like trying all the things I tried proactive. I remember all the Jessica Simpson commercials and I was like, oh my gosh, her skin's so clear that product's going to work. And it never did. (laughs) So don't be fooled by the advertising you see on TV just because a celebrity is plastered all over the marketing campaign. So proactive didn't work for me. I tried so many products and cleansers. Like my bathroom sink was like literally full of like 20 different things. And I know a lot of you guys have like your skincare routine. And I'm just here to say you don't necessarily need all that. (laughs) So in my 30s, finally, I learned some lessons. I realized how much nutrition impacts your skin. So some of the changes I started to make, they happened very slowly. I didn't like totally revamp my nutrition overnight, but I started to decrease a lot of things that I felt were very inflammatory in my body. So I decreased my sugar intake. I decreased like certain vegetables that were actually like giving me rosacea, like a lot of like spinach and asparagus, broccoli as well. I was finding like the more I like got rid of these things, like my skin was finally starting to clear up and it got to a point where it was so clear that I didn't even need to use all those products. I only nowadays just use a cleanser and then a moisturizer and that's it. Sometimes I don't even wash my face and it and it's still clear just because I've really cleaned up my nutrition lifestyle. Another thing that I changed in my nutrition was I started to up my healthy fats, my omega-3 fatty acids, because they're super soothing and anti-inflammatory for the body. And they're really great for female hormones. And I started to up my salmon, my bacon, my grass-fed butter, 
and just like really embracing the idea of having more fats. And what was really amazing about it all was I was starting to feel really good too. And then as a nice byproduct, my skin was just like really clearing up. I also struggled with a lot of hormonal issues and very painful, painful periods to the point where I couldn't get off the couch. I would be so nauseous the first day of my period that it was just like, I couldn't even like go to work and be productive that day. And I really just wanted to make a change. So the next change I made was adding in more animal-based proteins and just making sure I was getting all the essential amino acids that I needed and also the vitamins and minerals. And one thing that was like really lacking in my nutrition was red meat. I love my red meat because it is full of so many amazing nutrients like vitamin A, E, K, uh, magnesium, selenium, iron, which is really good for female health and omega-3 fatty acids and zinc and just all these amazing nutrients that just make you feel incredible. So I started to notice my periods weren't painful anymore. They were also starting to come on time like clockwork. I would know the exact day it was going to be there. I didn't need a period tracking app or anything. I was just so in tune with my body because I was giving it the nutrients that it had been craving for years. I was definitely not meat-based or fat-based in high school or college. I look back and I can't help but think, dang, how much better could I have felt and performed had I known back then? Um, Not just physical performance, but my hormonal health, my mental health too. I mean, there's so many amazing studies coming out on the benefits of meat base and fat base and how our brain needs all of these nutrients to function and to make sure that we don't get anxiety or depression. The brain needs fat. It needs DHA and EPA and saturated fat because it's made of fatty acids. So I just look back and I'm like, dang, I wish I could have changed that. So now it's really about, I want to feel good. And just as a nice byproduct, my skin has thrived. Another thing I wanted to talk about today, and this kind of relates into just the nonsense on social media, and I'm not passing judgment on anyone. Like you can choose what to do with your face, with your body. But for me, I really like to just lean into nutrition and the basics of life. And I think most girls should because that would take care of a broad range of health concerns and performance concerns. And one thing I just am so freaked out and I have a lot of friends who do it and have been doing it since their early 20s, which is really crazy, but it's Botox. I am a hashtag no tox person. It's an actual hashtag for people who just don't get Botox and they're proud of it and they're thriving, but I just never have been interested in it. And I'm 34 years old, so I'm definitely getting some wrinkles here, but hold on. Let me come up to the camera so you guys can see. You can see like, I clearly like have like wrinkles and like a ton of movement, whatever. It's all good. But yeah, I don't get Botox. I'm afraid of it. There's a lot of research coming out that there's a lot of chemicals and poisons in Botox that doctors aren't talking about. And I truly think Botox is going to be one of those things like 10 years down the line, we're going to realize is super poisonous for our bodies. I mean, we're even starting to see that with breast implant illness. And back in the 90s and early 2000s, everyone was getting implants And now in 2024, and in recent years, all these women are getting their implants removed because they were mysteriously feeling sick and they would have like flu-like symptoms, heart palpitations, red or yellow eyes, rashes on their skin, frequent colds and flus. And it's just really interesting. Like when they got them out and explanted them, they felt way better. And even like Playboy models and Victoria's Secret angels are getting them removed. And that should be a red flag. If Hugh Hefner's wife is getting hers explanted, then that says something. So I think Botox is going to be the same thing. We're going to 
think it's all great and everything's fun and games until 10 years down the line, people are going to have these crazy side effects. But again, like that's up for you to decide. But I feel like nutrition, like if you are worried about your skin and you want to go about it in a natural way and not have all these risks involved, then you should really lean into proper nutrition. And I'll say like, eating a steak a day keeps the Botox away from me. Yes, I have some wrinkles going on, but I still feel like my skin is like plump and glowy. I have been told I don't look 34. Cool. Like that's great. <laughs> um, so I will stick with my steak because it's very collagen producing and I don't need expensive collagen supplements and don't fall prey to the whole, oh, you need extra collagen from this expensive pill. You definitely don't just eat meat and thrive. So I just think social media is so toxic for a lot of us women because we see all these trends going on. We see, okay, skinny's in and then curvy and then obese. And then you got to get Botox at age 20 because it's preventative. That's BS. You don't need to get Botox at age 20. Your skin looks fine. Stop being a baby. Don't ever get Botox. <laughs> but that's the biggest lie ever sold. Getting Botox at age 20. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, if you don't, like, what Botox does is it basically freezes your muscle. So if you keep freezing your muscle in your face all through your 20s, you're literally going to have like a frozen face and actually look older in your 30s, 40s, and 50s. So in the end, it actually makes you look worse. But. <laughs> Anyway, like do what you want. Like I'm just trying to give my opinion because not a lot of people are talking about this. Not a lot of doctors and estheticians, celebrities aren't. I mean, celebrities do like on TikTok, oh, a day in the life, like come with me to the med spa to get Botox and lip filler. And everyone's like so open about it. And I'm like, there are literally 12 year old girls on Instagram and TikTok watching you. So I know what I'm up against. So I'm going to share my honest opinion. <laughs> Stick to the simple things in life. This reflects my coaching philosophy. If athletes aren't training properly, nourishing their body, recovering, sleeping well, just doing these basic life things as a human, then you're not going to have great performance. And the same with your health, the same with your physical health, your immune health, hormonal health, mental health, skin health. It always takes us back to the basics. I think everyone's looking for like this quick fix. Oh, I'm going to get this injection to look younger. Oh, I'm going to take this supplement to have amazing thriving health when really it's just doing the basics over and over again and just being freaking disciplined. And honestly, when you're disciplined for the long term, I think that's way more rewarding than a quick fix. It makes your life more rich and, and more fulfilling and I think if more girls go about it that way, they're going to find that they have really meaningful lives and not mindless lives where they're falling prey to everything that they see on social media and trying to get a quick fix or a quick hit of dopamine. Oh, I think I said what I needed to say today. I have been taking a step back on social media. I don't really consume a lot of content anymore. I like to read books and I like to just kind of live in peace. And man, has my anxiety really gone down? Man, has my mood really been better? Man, am I really sleeping better? And just feeling amazing all the time. So again, it's really about keeping things simple. More things definitely lead to more problems. So be careful what you consume. And just don't pay attention to all these trends. Because something new is going to come out next month and then the next month. And it's just so confusing. So you need to really get honest with yourself. Okay, how am I performing? And how am I feeling on a daily basis? Am I disciplined? Is my life meaningful? Or am I just taking everything I see as truth? Am I just being very mindless when I'm scrolling? So I'm going to leave you with this. I dedicated a whole chapter in my book, Female Athlete High Performance, to social media, and I'm going to read the last paragraph. I love this paragraph because it just is very hard hitting. So let's do it.
Use social media, but don't let it use you. Pursue a life of meaning, not mindlessness. Use discretion. Think. Don't react so quickly. Nothing is worse than being easily gullible, so stop taking everything as truth before researching the matter. Don't get sucked into what's making you unproductive and unhealthy either. Chase high performance and health. Don't waver. Stay grounded. Most of social media is fake, so stop taking everything as truth and go live your darn life. Thank you guys, and I will see you on the next episode of Queen Talks. Peace.